All right, welcome. So in this video, I want to introduce another model of computation uh, called the regular expression. All right, let's look at our uh, definition of what a regular expression is. What we're going to find here is that this definition is a recursive definition. And we start out with some sort of base case or terminating case definition, some simple definitions of what a regular expression can be. So to start out, we say that a regular expression could just be any sigma, any symbol from our alphabet. So if we're dealing with the binary alphabet, we're talking about here a zero or a one on its own counts as a regular expression. Again, these are very small atomic regular expressions. Another regular expression is just the empty string by itself. And then there's sort of a default regular expression that we include, although we don't actually use this one very often, which is the empty set. The empty set itself is a regular expression, again, not used super often. Typically, we are building our regular expressions out of symbols and out of epsilons when needed. Now, the remaining four entries here are recursive entries. They are saying, hey, if you start with a regular expression one and a regular expression R2, and you union them together, then you get another regular expression, okay? So, but you had to start with regular expressions to get there. So the union of any two regular expressions is a regular expression. The concatenation of any two regular expressions is a regular expression. And then taking a regular expression and applying the Kleene star operator is also going to give us a new regular expression. So these are, this is our recursive definition of what a regular expression is. And now maybe we can look at some regular expressions. So inside here, inside this language bra bracket here, I have a regular expression. We have 0, 0. That's formed by concatenating the, the symbol 0 to itself. We also have this uh, string here, 1, 0, 0, 1, which is formed by, again, concatenating 1 to a 0 to a 0 to a 1. And then we took those two regular expressions and we union them together to get this full union, this full regular expression. And what this uh, language operator is helping us see is that for this very simple regular expression that says 0, 0, union 1, 0, 0, 1, it's really just identifying for us exactly two strings that are in the language and that's it. It's saying the only two strings in this language are 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is a very simple regular expression, but it shows how we can use the concatenation and the union operator to uh, build up a description of a language using this new tool called a regular expression. Let's look at a slightly uh, different one here. Here I've just taken the zero symbol and I've applied the Kleene star to it. Well, this gives us the language all strings w that have zero or more zeros. Of course, that's what the uh, star operator means for us, zero or more copies of whatever we're applying it to. So again, we can very simply state this language here as a regular expression, just stating zero star. And now maybe we can take those, some of those ideas and put them together. So now we've got a, a string here, 0, 1, 1, 0, that's formed by uh, the concatenation, uh, as we saw earlier. Then we take that whole thing and apply the star operator to it. This means that our strings that we are, are creating are always going to be formed out of copies of 0, 1, 1, 0, but we can have zero or more copies of them. So the smallest string would be epsilon with zero copies. Of course, that's always acceptable by our, our star operator. And then we might have one copy, just this substring 0, 1, 1, 0, or maybe two 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and in, in, indeed continuing for any number of copies we might want. And now we can see that we could extend that even further. We've actually used all of our uh, potential rules now. We've got a union in here, we've got some concatenations in here, and we've got a star operator in here. I'm going to uh, either select a 0, 0 or a 1, 0, 0, 1, and it's going to keep repeating this process. Pick one of those two strings and, and concatenate it onto the end of the string. Do that as many times as you like until you decide your string is finished, and you'll get this interesting string that's been built out of these two substrings. So that's what we're uh, getting from this regular expression here. Now, for convenience, sometimes when we're writing our regular expressions, 
we like to introduce a little bit of a shorthand. We can think of these as additional rules that are uh, applicable in regular expressions, although typically we do not include these among the, the basic definition because most of these are indeed shorthand. So one of the things we'll do is if you mean uh, you can select any one of the symbols of our alphabet. So if our, our original alphabet sigma uh, consists of sigma 1 up to sigma n, we might want to write sigma 1, union sigma 2, so union sigma da 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 da, da union sigma n, uh, that tends to be a little bit tedious for us, and so we usually just write sigma. We'll just write the name of the alphabet itself uh, in place of uh, all those symbols union together. That just, again, saves us some uh, you know, keystrokes if we're writing it, or, or maybe uh, uh, just makes it simpler for us to interpret it when we're reading it. Um, the next thing we do is, well, we notice that the star operator allows us to have zero or more copies of a substring. But it is very common for us to want to have one or more copy of a substring, in which case we could just write it like this, r, the copy of the regular expression or the substring, and then concatenate it with r star. But again, we end up doing that so much that we find out, you know, we want that's kind of uh, a little bit longer than we'd want to express. So we just invented this r plus meaning okay that just means one or more copies of r so it's sort of like the star operator just slightly different again it's similar enough to the star operator that we don't usually think of this as a new operator as just an extension of the star operator and then finally again also for simplicity if you wanted to write down 17 zeros um, it's kind of one first of all it's kind of a pain in the butt to write down 17 zeros and then secondly um, it's hard to see that there are 17 zeros unless you literally count each one. Uh, and so it can, can be very convenient for us to use uh, just this shorthand using sort of an exponent uh, to tell. So we mean 17 zeros in a row. And it's sort of like the R plus or the R star. We just put a number up there as our exponent. So these are some shorthands that we can use. And just a simple example of how this might we might use this. We might say sigma to the power 7 all in a star. Well, this is telling us, well, when we put our symbols in, they need to be in collections of seven. You can start with zero, but then you have to put in seven, and then another seven, and then another seven. What symbols you put don't matter because it's sig sigma. We just need to make sure that you put seven at a time. That means the string that we're building will be have its length divisible by seven. So again, it's easy for us to state that language here, but it's easy for us to state it as a regular expression, which is going to be convenient because, as we'll see in a future video, the regular expressions are a way to show that a language is regular. So the way we've written this language on the right-hand side, it's not immediately clear to see that it is a regular language, but by writing it as a regular expression, we can immediately see that it is a regular language. All right, so that's a quick introduction to regular exp expressions. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in that next video.